Hello and welcome back. This is part two of my fitting and programming of the Denali S4 light pods and the Hex Easy Can. I won't lie to you, I filmed this probably about three weeks ago when I first got them. I did all the fitting and everything and I did the programming, um, but editing the video I thought it was a bit crap. I don't think I explained myself incredibly well. So full transparency, these are all programmed, ready to go. I've been using them for a couple of weeks now. Absolutely love them. They're awesome. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to run you through the Hex EasyCan software, how I've gone through it with this, the horn installation, which I've done on the bike as well, which you wouldn't have seen in the last video because I was still working it out. If you wait until the end of the video, there will be an on-road test as well. So I bought all of my kit through uh, Steve at a bike thing. Um, I'll leave all his info in the descriptions. I'll put something on screen. Steve talked me through the whole thing. I genuinely thought this programming of the Hex Easy Cam was going to be some form of like matrix style coding. Uh, it's really, really simple, which I'll show you in a minute. First thing I think we'll do is I'll give you a quick reminder of what the bike is like, the setup's like. I'll show you where the Hex is uh, and I'll show you where all the cable and routines go. So these are the Denali S4s. They are lovely bits of kit. I think they actually suit the bike really well. They're not too big, they're not too small, um, and they don't really look out of place. Now, one question I did get in part one is the clearance on these to the forks. Chatting to Steve from a bike thing, he recommended the S4s be the biggest that you put on these mounts. I believe these are the official KTM mounts, but they were provided through a bike thing because he had them on the website and his shipping was faster and stuff like that. So not incredibly accurate because I don't want to get this sharp thing near my forks and leave a massive gouge out of it. Um, but from the center of this mount, you're looking at about four centimeters to the side of the fork when the wheel is straight. Turning the wheel doesn't make a massive difference, but as you can see, I can barely get my finger between the outer of the light pod housing and the fork when the forks are straight. So if you've got bigger lights than this, like the D4s, either mount them on the lower bars or get yourself some upper crash bars or just find a different way of mounting them because you don't want to risk these clashing with your lights. Now, I'm not too sure whether you can see this. I've pulled all this out so it's normally a bit tidier than this. There's a bit of Velcro on the back of the Hex Easy Cam which actually sticks in here so it doesn't move. This is the Hex Easy Cam. Quite a lot of cable in here, but the uh, toolkit still fits in there so you haven't got to worry about that at all. This wiring then goes into the battery compartment obviously connects to the battery. So on the left side, running up underneath these paneling here, I've got three cables. So two of these and then one thin green one. One of those is for the left Denali light. One of them is for the Denali Sound Bomb Mini. The green wire here is the trigger wire for the horn. There is one single cable going up this side of the bike. If you haven't watched the first part of the video, I didn't actually end up removing the entire fuel tank underneath. I managed to find quite a nice route for the wiring to run up the side. All the wiring is enclosed underneath the outer factory panels. I don't know if you can see that red tag. That's where the wire comes out, just underneath the battery charging cable and it goes down to the lights. I've had no issues with them at all. And then if I spin you around here, you'll see where I have mounted the Denali horn. So as you'd have seen there, I've got the Denali uh, Sambo Mini. Now that is a slightly bigger horn than the stock ones on every bike. I originally bought this for my Tracer, my Tracer 700, which some of you will know. And for that, it's literally just a case of taking the old horn off and using the existing connectors straight into the new horn. Happy days, it all works, and then it's just mounting it. On the canvas system bikes, I thought it'd be exactly the same. It's not. So with this setup, you have the existing horn in place, and then you have the Denali as a secondary horn. So you take one of the cables off, plug that into the piggyback, plug the piggyback into the existing cable slot on the horn, and that's how it works. And then the other cable runs from the easy can to the horn, and then you've got twin horn set up. Got it? <laughs> now, obviously, that means I had to mount the secondary horn instead of just replacing it where the other one was, which was a bit of a faff. Steve from a bike thing and Denali themselves sell horn mounts um, for this exact reason. I didn't buy one because again, I thought I could just replace it in the existing slot, but you know, stupid of me, strikes again. So that was the reason I couldn't work out how to do the horn in the last episode. That's essentially all the fitting and how I managed to get everything sorted. Uh, I hope you're still with me, and if you are, well done, because I do ramble a lot. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to get into the Hex EasyCan software, and I'll plug the bike in a second. 
the first time I did this, I won't lie to you, I had a bit of an issue uh, working out why the lights weren't corresponding to this circuit. There's four circuits and I couldn't quite get them to talk to each other, if that makes sense. I ended up unplugging everything, then just plugging one in at a time to see if I can see what corresponded and what reacted to what I was doing. It was pretty simple, it's just a little bit of troubleshooting, I guess. It's also worth noting that I had to do a software update on my EasyCan before I started using it. So that is something you literally plug it into your PC or your Mac, and then you can download the software and it tells you whether it needs an update or not. Let's get into the Hex EasyCan software. You're not gonna be able to see this screen, but I will put it here somewhere, so you will be able to see it. Go onto Hex Easy Can's website. They do the system for KTMs, for BMWs, and more recently, Africa Twins. I think they do it for some Harleys as well, so that's really good. One thing they have got, which I find really, really useful, is they've got full installation guides on here. You just scroll down, there's a bit where you can download the software. They do that for Mac and for PC, so all fine. Once you've done that and it's installed, it looks roughly like this. So at that point, we're gonna plug the bike in. So as you can see here, I've just taken off the uh, clip on the end there's a tiny little rubber uh, port cover on the back of the hex easy can you will see there is a small usb socket there and i've got a blinking green light when i plug this cable into this that light goes solid there we go so we go back over here as you would have seen there's already a new version i'm just going to install that now agree and then this is exactly what the software looks like at the very top here you've got your four circuits so you've got your red circuit your blue circuit your yellow and your white if you click on one of these circuits it comes up with this you've got auxiliary one left auxiliary one light you've got a set of auxiliary lights horn the accessories turn signals brake lights heated gear or anything like that if you click on the ampage down the bottom, you can change how much ampage is going to that if you want to. It should automatically dictate what the ampage is on that, so you shouldn't have to change that. If you click up here on the uh, warning triangle, you get a full diagnostics box that comes up. Now that shows you what ampage you've got going to each one at the current state. You've got the max ampage that's gone through at any one particular time, so we can see here that the peak ampage that went to the horn, for example, as you'll see, the horn is set as the white circuit. Just ignore the yellow circuit, that's redundant at the moment. But that was 13.46 amps. Uh, that would obviously blow a fuse if it was a consistent thing. Um, on the hex, it would just stop working. It wouldn't blow a fuse or anything. You've got temperature, you've got your battery voltage, you've got your switch state, your horn input voltage, and whether your canvas data is showing. Obviously, this isn't showing anything because my ignition is off. Now, if I go and turn the ignition on, this should change. So you can see that went away. So coming on to the options, you've got a few different ones here. Whatever you set your circuits as, it will come up down here. So you can see here, I've only got an auxiliary circuit for one set of lights. I've got a left and right as my red and my blue, which will sh you, you will see up here in the top right hand corner on that circuit. And then the horn is my white, white and yellow. Again, ignore the yellow, you don't need to worry about that. What you can do with the lights, and you can do this on any set of, set of Denali lights, you've got a day intensity and night intensity for dipped beam, and then you've got day intensity and night intensity for full beam. Now I run these at the Denali lights at 40% in the day and the night. I have no issues with people getting dazzled. I've got no people flashing me or anything like that. Obviously on full beam, I want them at full whack, so they are both set to 100%. On the right here, you've got your options for the lights. You've got an off when the turn signal is active, which I'll show you in a minute. Essentially, that means that Denali light pod will go off when that indicator is on. You can also change that to flash. So if you've got some of the smaller, like uh, I think they're D1s or something like that, I'll put them on screen now. You can get an amber lens for those, which means they will flash at the same time as your indicator. Strobe when the horn is active. Again, really self-explanatory. If you strobe when the horn is active, as soon as you press the horn, you get the light strobing with it. Strobe when you flash to pass. If you pull your high beam trigger three times, the lights flash three times. Inverse flashing when the hazards, is, hazards are active. Again, pretty self-explanatory, but it just means you get your indicator, your hazards flash, then your lights flash, and it just, it just flashes between the two. Really, really visible at night. 
what I gather from modulation is in the day, it dictates what it thinks the light should be at percentage wise. You'll have a light sensor on your bike, which is obviously when the automatic headlights come on and whatnot. If it's a really bright day, the lights will get dimmer. If it's quite dim in the evening, they'll get slowly brighter. I don't have that on. The reason I don't have that on is because I found the lights just pulsed a bit. If your lights are pulsing a bit, or they look like they're strobing, like low level strobing, it's probably because you've got modulation turned on. So try turning that off and hopefully that should solve your issue. And then obviously I've got my horn labeled. So what I'll do now is I will try and get you set up and another camera set up so you can see what happens when I move these sliders. I'm not gonna go too mad because it is quarter past seven in the evening and I don't wanna piss my neighbors off too much. You can see me in that one, can you see me? Yeah, you can see me in that one. So what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna start messing around with these sliders. Now, if these look like they're pulsing at all, that's down to the camera's frame rate. It's nothing to do with the lights itself. These are very much a solid beam of light. Now, as I mentioned, these run at 40% power in the day and the night as standard. That's what this is. Very, very bright and I'm very impressed with it. It lights up the road really, really well. If I start messing around with the intensity, if I come to night intensity, I can just dial that up so there, that is 100% intensity, and then I can obviously take that down, I can turn them off completely if I want. Now, one thing that's also worth noting with these is if you hold the indicator button in, it will turn them off and on. Say you go out riding and you start dazzling people and like you haven't got them quite set up properly, hold the indicator button in for three seconds and it should turn them off, same with turning them back on. So if I literally just hold the indicator button in for three seconds, one, two, three, and they go off. And again, if I turn them back on, one, two, three, there we go. Very, very simple, but I actually quite like that feature, just being able to turn them off completely if I want to. One of the features I mentioned is being able to turn off one of the lights when the indicator's active. This is what that looks like. And then when you press cancel, it slowly comes back on. Same with the other one. The next option is strobe when the horn's active. If you've got epilepsy or you are sensitive to light flashing or anything, I suggest you look away now until you hear the horn stop beeping. As I mentioned before, this is gonna sound both of the horns. So the high pitched stock one and the Denali. This is really, really loud. Apologies, and if you're wearing headphones, really apologies. <laughs> My ears. <laughs> next. Now, I don't have this feature active, but the next one is strobe to pass. To activate this, you pull your high beam switch three times and it flashes three times. I'll show you now. Again, look away if you've got epilepsy or something. One, two, three. There we go. Next one on the list is inverse flashing with the hazard. So I'll put the hazards on. And you can see each set of lights inversely flashes. One of the other features, as I mentioned before, they go to high beam when you put the high beam switch on. This is all done through the standard motorcycle switch gear, which I really, really like. Awesome, awesome bit of kit. There are some other options available. So if you get the brake lights and things like that, you can obviously add a few extra features based on that. I don't have those, so I can't enable that feature, obviously. All I need to do now, stick the seat back on, and I will see you in the next part where I'm gonna go and do a night test. I'll see you on a dark lane somewhere. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna stand over here because I'm getting attacked by swarms of moths. <laughs> Uh, I am on the darkest lane I could find. It's literally in the middle of nowhere. Allow me to show you how dark it actually is. We all know GoPros are absolutely crap at picking up light, so you probably can't even see how bright this is. But ready for this? <laughs> it's literally pitch black. I literally, I mean, I'm getting a glow off of my camera, and that's it. What I'm gonna do, let me uh, get the bike started again. I am on the side of the road because this is actually surprisingly quite a busy lane. It's 
probably a back lane that all the drunk drivers use, so I'm probably going to get hit. I'm going to do a test of standard Super Adventure headlight, standard Super Adventure high beam, standard Super Adventure's headlight with the Denali S4s on 40% as I, as I set them up before, and then the full beam test. I'll also run you through the other little bits, all the little bits I've just shown you in the garage, but out here in the wild to kind of show you how bright they actually are on the road. I have got another little side camera set up. You might be able to see me. It's really bright. That is a slightly better angle. If I stand back here, you'll probably be able to see me. That's a slightly better angle. It's better than this uh, main camera because this one just seems to get rid of any light provided whatsoever. So this is the standard Super Adventures main light. So as you can see, it is more than bright enough. It is so bright. There's, they're off the LED. It gives plenty of light throw. It's a very cut off horizon, but a very, very straight direct beam. You can see all these little moths. <laughs> all the little moths attacking the light. Oh my God, bright things. So if we now go to the standard Super Adventures high beam, for you guys, it's probably not gonna look a lot different, but it is very bright. I can see well into the distance. The trees are lit up quite well. It just gives you a little bit more above the horizon, which is obviously what you're lacking with a low beam. Now, one thing you probably can't see, but I'll stand here. The light pattern of the stock light starts about here. I am probably, what, just shy of 10 feet away from my bike. From here forward, you'll see on my legs, do you like my little dongle? Um, that's the heated gloves, it's not my, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> um, but from here forward is all black space. Now, I'm not saying you necessarily need that. However, if there's something right in front of you, you can't see it. Obviously the Super Adventure comes with the three cornering lights per side. So this part of the light actually sort of lights up quite well in corners. Oh, I mean, it's fantastic if I'm honest. That whole dark spot up there gets lit, lit up really, really nicely when the cornering lights are on. So what I will do now is I will put the Denali S4s on, on 40% power. One, two, three, and the light should come on. Oh, <laughs> they're so bright. Down to this dark lane, they are so bright. Right, I'm going to turn around. <laughs> that is so bright. So that's 40%. And as you can see, where I was before, which is roughly here, there is now light all the way down here. Like literally all the way down, which is lovely. It means it lights up all the curbs, lights up all the side. You can see everything that's directly in front of you as well. But also I've got these tilted down. So because I don't want to dazzle anyone, I just want these to be a very visible pair of lights. I don't want to be dazzling people, I don't want people flashing me constantly, it just annoy me. As I mentioned before, I've been riding with these for probably a couple of weeks now, because this is a now third time of filming this evening bit. I've ridden home from central London to home at night, as dark as this, and I don't get flashed at all. Riding here to this dark lane, I didn't get flashed once. No one's even like worried about them. It just looked like a very bright light coming. So I could have these further up and they could throw light further. If we're gonna get an entire moth army come and attack us. But if I put this on high beam. <laughs> that is so bright. I'm just getting uh, little dark patches up there where this little moth's running around on the light. But that is so, so bright. Like, unbelievably bright. That's almost daytime. <laughs> that is unbelievable. I can see for miles. My eyes actually hurt now just from turning around. Ow. I'm going to turn that off because I'm going to blind myself. The thing that's even more crazy than that, these are very much like a middle of the road Denali light. They have the D4s which are bigger, they have the D7s which are enormous. These are very much a middle of the road driving DRL kind of fog light kind of thing. The fact that I get that much light from them, I dread to think how bright the D7s would be. This little, little moth just decided to cotch on my front headlight. It's probably quite warm. What we'll do now is I'll go into the some of the uh, features. If I do the indicator. So there you go. Very, very bright. And as you can see, by that turning off, it almost highlights the indicator even more. And on the road, 
coming up to a roundabout or anything like that that makes an enormous difference in people that see you if we now go to the hazards same thing but the hazards alternate as i showed you in the garage but if i go and stand over here look how bright that is that is incredibly bright so if you're on the side of the road you're going to be seen from a mile away and then one thing i have noticed as well is those lights flash at 100 percent they don't flash at whatever you've got them set at so you can see they're really bright and then if i turn them off you'll see that go flash and then it goes back down to 40 percent see there we've also got the three flashes which do the strobes but that is so so bright i don't know why you'd use that i don't i'm not particularly going to use it myself however it's quite nice to have and the last one is the horn now i've got the horn <laughs> oh, i'm such a child now if i beat my horn it's obviously going to strobe the lights ready <laughs> oh i'm never going to get bored of that that is unreal <laughs> I've taken some pictures, some side-by-side -side comparisons. I'll stick those on screen now, and you'll be able to see the standard headlight on high beam, the standard headlight with the Denali's at 40%, and obviously this, the standard headlight and the Denali's at full beam. Oh, I'm blown away. I'm so happy with these. Really, really chuffed. Now this lane I'm gonna go down is really dark, so I'm hoping we're gonna get a quite a good comparison. Gloves back on. Let me try and plug them in. I need a Denali on my head. Talking of Denali's on my head, Steve, from a bike thing, saw the per first part of this video completely unprovoked and I again I, I still I messaged him going this is completely unnecessary he didn't need to do this but he sent me a ceramic coating from ceramic pro he sent me a uh, like a same from ceramic pro but they do like a an alcohol cleaning spray stuff that you can clean down the panels before you ceramic coat them he also sent me a bike thing beanie with an led headlight in it completely undeserved on my part but if you're watching this part steve thank you so much i was seriously blown away really really blown away so thank you very much this is the super adventures headlight on just standard beam and as you can see i've got so much light it's um it's really visible it is it's giving me loads of light in the distance as well if i put the high beam on again there is i mean it's it's ample there's there's definitely no need for additional lighting on this but i wanted it so and then obviously as i mentioned before you lean into the corners you get the cornering lights which really help if i put on the s4s there's just like even just like that there's so much more light it, it's just insane how how much light i'm actually getting through there i know i've got low fuel shut up so if I come round here and I'll put the high beams on. <laughs> that is just, I'm, I'm riding along in daytime. There is so much light there. Like that is actually sublime. And then all these people coming the other way aren't flashing me at all. Oh look, this would be an Uber picking up someone from the pub. There you go. <laughs> I can't believe oh, this. I know I keep saying this, but I can't believe how bright these are for like a mid-range set of Denali's. <laughs> That's never gonna get old. That is so, so so bright. And to be fair, having the Hex Easy Can as well, everything goes through the stock bike switch gear. I haven't got a single button on my bike that isn't factory. I've got all of this extra functionality over a pair of sort of standard light, standard fog lights. Oh, there's a little rabbit. Saw that a mile off. The KTM auxiliary lights for this bike are about 350, 400 quid. And that's not fitted. Let's take fitting out of it because obviously uh, you'd have to fit these yourself if you didn't get someone to do it for you. But when you're paying that kind of money and all you're getting is a set of like stock fog lights with no features, or you pay 350, 400 quid on a set of Denali's with the Hex Easy Can and you could do all of this additional stuff, that's worth it all day long. But I just think it's brilliant. Anyway, I'll stop blabbering on. Thank you very, very much to Steve at A Bike Thing for helping me choose the lights. The one thing that I give credit for to Steve more than anything, and it's the same reason I keep going back to Bike Stop, is he didn't try to oversell something that he knew I didn't want. He listened to what I wanted and what I was after for the bike, and he pointed me straight at the right set of lights 
genuinely was just a really nice guy so thank you very much steve let me know what you think in the comment section below as you can tell i'm massively happy with them so over the moon i mean not only do they look good not only do they have a load of features but going into london the traffic parts like the red sea it is so so good thank you very much for watching and i will see you in the next video